Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and in today's video, I'll be answering the question of whether or not you should play Paladins in 2023. Competitive FPS games have been getting boring for me as a whole lately with Apex dealing with constant issues and a lackluster rank system that rewards ratting and has over 250,000 master players as of record in this video, which is insanely high for a season. Slow FPS games like Counter-Strike and Valorant just not really being my taste and appealing to me. Although Siege is a game that I've recently got it back into after taking a year hiatus and I've been enjoying the heck out of that. Then there's Overwatch 2, a game that decided to lose its main PvE mode after three and a half years of development due to engine issues and wanted to save time for the smaller pieces of PvE content. Monsieur, does this mean Overwatch is back? <sighs> no. Imagine over-promising something, showing it so much over the years and have it squandered in one sentence. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself as that isn't the topic for this video, but I happened to stumble upon one good game that got so much slack and attention for being an Overwatch clone, and that's Paladins. Paladins is a game that caught my attention back in my high school years, but never bothered to touch it due to the success that was Overwatch 1 back when it first came out in 2016. Now, granted, Paladins launched in closed beta in 2015, but no one had any idea on what the game was, with little marketing being done even before Overwatch 1 came out. Fast forward to 2023, and the game has come a long way from what it once was, constantly releasing new champions every few months, events, skins, and game modes in order to keep the game relevant, and most importantly, fun. Fun is the keyword I will be exploring as I explain and talk about Paladins, because this game does suffer from a few issues that I want to mention so that you're aware of what to expect when playing because, in my honest opinion, if you play this game with a positive mindset and ignore the issues, whether you're playing ranked or quick play, you'll get a lot more enjoyment out of it. Why am I saying this? Because even though there are other competitive games out there where you should also have fun and try not to think of the negatives as much, I feel like with Paladins, it's a bit different seeing that some of the balancing decisions they make are questionable at times and, to me, it just feels more like a game to unwind and have some fun in. Like a single player game or something like that. It's a bit hard to explain, but I hope that after breaking down what this game offers and how it differentiates itself from Overwatch, you'll understand what I mean and why. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's talk about it, shall we? It's core, Paladins is a team-based shooter that pins players into 5v5 situations, where you play as one of 58 champions available, each having their own abilities and quirks. There are many game modes available, such as Siege, which is the main game mode of Paladins, similar to hybrid maps for those who play Overwatch, where you first capture a point, then proceed to escort the payload to its destination. Distance isn't taken into account here for the payload, so if you don't make it across, the enemy team scores. It's first to four points, and players score from both defending and attacking. If the match goes three to three, you have to capture the point in order to win the game. This is also the go-to game mode for ranked, as the other gamers don't provide the competitive experience like this one does. Payload, a simpler version of Siege where you're escorting a payload, but the win condition for this one is defined by distance. You also get an extra amount of credits, which I'll explain later. Team Deathmatch, a game mode all about getting kills. First to 40 wins. There's also Onslaught, which is a King of the Hill style mode where you can test, capture, and hold a point until you reach a score of 400 has quicker spawns and increased credit gain, but as of the current update, which is the Midnight Masquerade update, they're rotating this and TDM out, so if it's there when you're on, it's there. On that note though, I don't understand why they would rotate out gamers when they have a mode select system that allows players to pick what gamers they want to play. I get that it's done for the sake of quicker queue times, but people can pick what they want to play. Personally, I pick all the gamers to boost my queue time so I can always play something different. If they didn't have a mode select option, then sure, rotate game modes out. But I just find it weird that this is a thing when I think both of those game modes are great fun, especially Onslaught. Having to wait for it now kind of sucks. They also had plans to take Payload out entirely, but have decided to keep it after hearing all the player feedback about it. There's also a ranked mode which has its own rank system where you can ban three champions and has a limit where you can matchmake with certain ranks. All of my time on Paladins is on quick play though, as it's hard to get a game in Australia, and playing on Asia servers doesn't cut it for me because of the ping, so for that, I just stick to quick play. It's pretty robust from what I've seen and heard, and it's great for when you feel confident to jump in and play with other players of your skill level. 
Plus, the seasons are ridiculously long, so if you aim for a rank, you can definitely get it, as long as you put the time in. If you don't feel as confident when you first play after checking out the fire range, you can step into the game's training modes in which there are a few of, consisting of Onslaught, Practice Choose Any, and Siege, all which match you up with bots. I'm not sure if it matches you up with other players or not. Champions are divided into four roles, which are Frontline, Damage, Flanker, and Support. Frontline are your tanks, so these are the champs that will quote unquote be on the front lines and try to eat as much damage as they can, on top of showing presence and holding slash pushing objectives. The tank that I've been running is Ash, who boasts a shield that soaks damage and provides mobile cover for her team, coupled with an ultimate that pins her flag down an area and gives her invulnerability for the duration, provided that she is within the aura of her flag. Uh, damage are mid to long range characters that dish out consistent amounts of damage, pretty self-explanatory. This is my go-to role, and my personal favorite is Tyra, who has an assault rifle that could be classified as an AK, dealing lots of damage while also having a grenade launcher that explodes on impact, dealing either direct or area damage, depending on where it lands, and a firebomb that does damage over time and can be thrown in either choke points or small areas to help area deny or apply pressure. She also has a hunting mark where she marks her, a player for her to be revealed through walls and deal increased damage to that target for an X amount of time. The ultimate ramps up her rate of fire and increases her movement speed, allowing you to mow down enemies. Another damage champion that I find fun to play is Sati, who has a hand cannon that makes me feel like I'm playing Destiny, with its high damage shots that can shred tanks, alongside a coin that you can shoot at which ricochets and hits enemies. An escape move that pushes her away from the enemy and can be used to reposition as well, followed by a decoy that puts her invisible for a few seconds while also marking any enemies that shoot at the decoy. The ultimate is a wall bang that allows three of her shots to penetrate all surfaces, damaging anyone who's kind enough to walk into it. Flankers are characters who push, pressure, and punish the enemy backline. My go-to flanker is Androxus, who is the McCree slash Cassidy of Paladins, having a high damaging revolver coupled with his reversal ability that each shot sends it back towards the enemy. A simple punch and a dash move that allows him to move in any direction, making him a hard target to hit. He was the first character I picked up in Paladins, and I still get enjoyment playing him to this day. His ultimate turns his weapon into an explosive revolver, dealing massive amounts of damage for 3 shots. Last but not least, we have the support champions. These are the characters that heal and give players boosts, try to stay alive, and also help with the damage whenever they can. My favorite support is Furia, who heals by applying a soul to the target character, has a solar flare that can heal or damage enemies depending on what talent you pick, and an escape ability that moves her back while also spawning fireballs that track the closest enemy if they're within range. The ultimate boosts her entire team's weapon damage and movement speed, and is one of the few game-changing ults in Paladins. It also gives her temporary invulnerability while she's activating it. Paladins has an interesting card system where you can slot cards into a 5 card deck, allocating points to them as well, each increasing the card's effectiveness. There's a max of 15 points, and you can make all kinds of decks to complement your playstyle, or better yet, the talent that you'll be running on your champion. Each champ has 3 talents, all which consist of a special bonus slash advantage, but you can only choose one talent to bring along. As soon as you pick one talent in-game and deck, you won't be able to change it. I love these systems because they add depth to the game and allows champs to be played in different ways. For example, Tyra's talents consist of Mercy Cure, which gives her grenade 3 charges at the cost of reduced grenade damage, Hunting Party, which makes her Hunter's Mark work for allies as well as adding an additional mark, allowing you to mark 2 enemies at once, so allies will be able to do more damage to mark targets, and Burn Monster. Her Firebomb deals more damage and applies a reduced healing effect, which is very handy against tanks as it'll reduce their tanking effectiveness. The talents that I like to run are Mercy Kill and Hunting Party, and I've got 2 decks to complement this, one for the grenade launcher, which gives me bonuses such as increased HP, healing, reduced damage, and reducing active cooldowns, while my other deck is built around the mark, increasing its duration, reducing cooldown, and boasting similar cards from the first one. You can change these up however you want and experiment with different options. These will all change very often with balance changes and meta shifts, so if you decide to take a break from the game for a few months then come back, there will most likely be a change in at least one of your champion's decks. These systems work par and par together, and it's satisfying to see a build work in your favor. Man, all these talks about talents. A game that I played could have had this and more if it didn't get scrapped in one interview. Though you may have a good build, you'll need some other things to help bolster that build. That's where Paladin's items come in, which give players bonus stats and provide an edge in combat. Remember the credits I mentioned? 
As you progress through a game, you earn credits from eliminations, assists, and playing the objective, which you then use to spend on these items. There's heaps of items to choose from, split into categories such as defense, utility, healing, and offense. I won't go through all of them, so I'll go through one from each category. Haven reduces the amount of damage you take from direct and area sources. Chronos reduces all of your ability cooldowns, minus your ultimate ability, which has its own item called Morale Boost. Little 2 for 1 for you. Veteran increases your overall HP, and Deft Hands increases your reload speed. Each of these items have 3 tiers and can be upgraded in however order you please. You can only pick up 4 of these items in a match though, so keep that in mind. What you buy will also depend on a few variables, such as what the enemy team is running and what you're lacking as a character. So for example, on Tyra, my usual go-to 4 items are Nimble, Veteran, and Deft Hands, as I don't have an escape ability, plus I'm slow, so having movement speed is a nice touch. Veteran for the extra HP, since I get HP back from my deck alongside her hidden passive in which the gun provides lifesteal, and Deft Hands for more DPS. The fourth item is situational and just depends on what's happening at the current time in the match. A free to play game isn't a free to play game without a store and Paladins has a hefty store packed with items and things to get, such as champion skins, sprays, emotes and avatars to name a few. It's nothing to write home about though high res have been going crazy with some of these skins to the point where I feel like they're low key milking customers. To be fair, the skin game here is really good. They also have an event pass which is essentially this game's battle pass having around 30 tiers and is progressed by playing the game and completing quests. Personally, I think the pass is underwhelming as there isn't enough rewards or incentive to justify its asking price. Not to mention the amount of time you have to complete it. I think if they were to up the tiers to 100 like most games, it would mean more rewards and things to go for. I'm not sure why I'm asking for an improvement to a battle pass, but here I am. Thankfully, the free rewards sort of make up for this, but I don't know, it just feels meh. The only things I can really complain about in Paladins are the bugs, cause boy, there are a good amount of them. Abilities not working as intended, physics not working, chance being broken for weeks at a time, game crashing, talents not working, the list goes on. I can overlook all these problems though, because I only got into Paladins recently, so I don't have the hours or the experience that Paladins veterans have to kind of back up what I'm saying. But I've definitely had my fair share of game crashes and no hit registrations that give me Apex Legends PTSD. I don't want to go into too much about this topic, but Paladins has bugs that may stay for days or weeks, even months before they get patched out, so keep that in mind. In summary, for those looking for an entirely different game or an alternative to Overwatch, I highly recommend Paladins. It's so much fun and better than it's ever been, with new content being released every few months and plenty of characters to play around with and try. I mostly play this game solo to get enjoyment out of it that way, but you can most certainly play with your friends too for a better experience. A bit shorter than my normal videos, but I hope this helps to provide a quick overview on the game that I'll definitely be playing more in my spare time. If I miss anything, comment down below. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.